Yeah, I really appreciate the privilege of being able to get up here and share what our services entail. Uh, and for those of you that when your turn comes up, I hope you'll take advantage of it. What a great opportunity to spend 10 minutes and be able to tell everyone all about your company. So this morning, I'd like to talk to you about everything you need to help keep your home pest free during the holidays. <laughs> Don't invite your uh, in-laws. Yes. That's right. <laughs> when the weather cools down, oh, come on now. There it goes. Most of us will spend more time indoors. And during the winter, we keep our doors and windows closed to try and stay warm. Unfortunately, you'll find that many different pests are going to want to join you indoors because they're looking for food and they want to stay warm too. <laughs> and here are 10 things you can do to help keep your home as free this winter. The first thing you need to do is to guard against importing new pests from other places. Check your materials for hitchhiking bugs when you bring them into the house. For one thing, check luggage, especially for men laws. <laughs> you want to check clothing. You buy new items, maybe shop, <coughs> shop at a thrift store. Be very careful and check everything. Yes. Maybe have it professionally laundered first. You want to check your groceries. You never know what can come in with them. Remember my story from a couple of weeks ago where this person had pancake mix all full of beetles. So you want to be careful about that. Some of the markets have some old stuff in there. And another thing you want to do is keep an eye on nursery stock. You buy a new plant from Home Depot, it looks all nice, mm -hmm. may have an ant farm included at no extra charge. <laughs> Bonus. <laughs> Next thing you really want to do is go around your home, maybe have Jesus Sarasaga help you out, trim the trees, bushes, and vines away from your home to discourage insect and rodent passage. This is a classic example of see how the trees overgrown. All sorts of insects as well as rats, opossums, and raccoons can climb up onto the house, tear the shingles off, cause a lot of damage. Another thing you would do is remove plants that attract pests because of their fruit nectar. I was just out doing a home yesterday in Irvine. They've got fruit laying on the ground. Of course, they're complaining about rats in their attic, keeping them awake at night. This is part of the problem. Clean up that stuff or maybe consider removing the tree. Another thing you want to keep an eye on are plants that have honey do producing insects such as aphids because those are very attractive to ants. Quite frequently we'll find a set of plants next to a house full of honeydew and of course it's like having an ant farm or an ant factory right next to your home and then people wonder why they've got them in their kitchen. This is a good example of a fruit tree. Keep them trimmed back, pick up all the fruit up off the ground, or maybe consider removing them. <coughs> Another thing you would do is eliminate tree stumps, leaf piles, boards on the ground, and other favorite nest sites outdoors. This provides harborage for all sorts of insects and small animals. Uh, this is a photo of John Thomas's backyard. <laughs> 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 Another thing you want to do is go around your home, check for big cracks in your walkways, driveways. These are great places for insects to hang out. Maybe talk to Bruce Beinlich about replacing it. Go outside, check where you store your firewood. Make sure it's up off the ground. If you leave it set on the ground, not only is it great harborage for insects and rodents, it's also a great potential termite problem. Keep it up off the ground, keep it away from the home. Remember, more than half the firewood that you purchase is already infested with termites and beetles. 
go around and check your screens. These are great for keeping all sorts of flying insects as well as birds out of your house. If they're damaged, you need to have them repaired or replaced. Check your vent screens, like here in the sub area. You can see where the guy from the cable TV company knocked the screen out of the way so it could run the wire through. Unfortunately, now this is great passageway for uh, cats, for, oh, cats, opossums, rats, and so on. Keep those screens in good shape. You want to go outside and check for excess of moisture. Here are some problems that you might run into. One would be leaking rain gutters. If they're in bad shape, maybe you want to talk about having them repaired or replaced. Clogged rain gutters. This is another place where John Thomas, I know, can help you out. Clean those rain gutters out. One of these days, it's going to rain in California again. <laughs> Trust me. And then leaking faucets. Your faucets are leaking. You're wasting water. Also creating a great habitat for insects. Call Chris Swinson and have him take care of that for you. Another thing you want to do is make sure that you've got good ventilation in your attics. Sometimes builders forget to add these things to homes when they're doing remodels. Maybe the roofer says it's in the way, throws it away when he replaces the roof. Make sure your attic's well ventilated. Helps keep the attic dry, which will help reduce mold and mildew problems later, reduce the number of insects. And last but not least, it helps keep your house cooler during the summer. And you want to also check your sub area vents. A lot of homes, when you walk around the outside, you see the vent screens for the sub area have been kicked in. Maybe they're rusted out. Get those replaced. I don't know how many times I crawl underneath houses and we've got cats under there talking to me or I see a raccoon smiling or whatever. It's not a good thing. Uh, creates a lot of fleas and not to mention when they die, it's very, the odors are ghastly. And last but not least, keep your garbage cans sealed. Put all your trash in nice, sturdy containers, especially with all the problems we're having with coyotes, <laughs> raccoons, again, opossums. Keep these containers clean. It'll also help reduce the amount of flies that you have around your house. <clears throat> and question, do you or do you know anyone that needs help? Please call us for an inspection. Remember, our inspections are always complimentary. It's like yesterday when I was out at this home in Irvine. We were out there for two hours inspecting our home, trying to determine why they were having a rat problem. And I had to remind the homeowner, hey, I've been out here for two hours. I haven't charged you a dime. You don't owe me anything. What I'm trying to do, I was explaining to him, is earn the right to do business with them. And of course, are you buying or selling a home? Our inspections are thorough and our rates are very reasonable. And if you are buying a home, we highly recommend that you do this or have your home inspected before you purchase it. You want to know all about it before you buy. You don't want surprises. And because of our inspections, we have saved our clients countless tens of thousands of dollars a lot of people have walked away from homes. I know some real estate agents are very pleased with me in that regard. I'm sorry. You know, maybe I suggest you sell a better house next time. <laughs> well, you know what I'm saying, Gene. You know, some real estate agents are so desperate to make a sale they'll market anything. Whereas I think the more honest and Ethical agents are going to explain, hey, this is what you've got. I'm not going to misrepresent this property. We're going to disclose everything. You know the drill. I know. And then. Oh, yeah. So I'd like to remind everyone about our hotel special. Now, you've heard me mention this before. During the off season, the hotel is having a hard time filling up their rooms. So they've worked with me and said, hey, you help send us some clients, we'll offer you a special rate. I'm not aware of any other termite company in Orange County that's offering anything about like this. So share this with your friends and neighbors. 
You have your house fumigated. We'll put you up in the Coast Mesa Ramada Inn for two nights. This is a nice place. Two queen sites, beds, sleeps up to five people. It's pet friendly, so if you've got a small dog, cats, bring them along. They've got a nice lawn out there for you to walk your dog at night. Room has a refrigerator, coffee maker, free internet, heated pool and hot tub. There you go. Fitness center. Of course, I always say that it's just almost across the street from Guild Yearly's. So if you want to swing by and work out and hit the hot tub afterwards, what a weekend. And it's last but not least, it's only minutes from the beach. Great opportunity here. This offer, now we're going to have to have it expiring at the end of the month, November 30th. And we really appreciate this opportunity to share our services with you. Any questions? Yes? What causes uh, crickets infestations? All right, good question. We're seeing a lot of those this year. Remember that crickets like eating decaying vegetation. So if you've got a lot of leaves, old plants and grass that's dying around the house, one of the best ways to help prevent that problem is just come by with your weed whacker, cut all that stuff down and rake it up. That'll help reduce it. Back to the other slide that I showed you where we have cracks in the walkways, sidewalks and so on. Those are great places for crickets to hang out. If you seal those areas up, less harborage for the crickets. Of course, we also have products that can help reduce that problem. I believe we did that for Dennis Jenkins yeah. not too long ago. Any other questions? Bruce Beinle. I just have a, a comment. I'm working with a client right now who just purchased a house, uh, had the inspection done probably prior before, prior to them uh, purchasing it. The termite company has gone in there and supposedly did the repairs and the removal of the uh, pests, and they didn't do it. They had another company come out, and it's clear that they didn't do the repairs, even though they signed off on them, and that they didn't eliminate the infestation of termites. So um, it's you got to have somebody that you can trust to do this stuff. Well, I appreciate you saying that, Kathy. How often should you termite your house? Well, down here along the coast area, I recommend every eight to ten years. If you'll have your house fumigated on a regular basis, the amount of repairs will be very minimal. It's kind of like Val Sheppens. If you have your car oil changed every three or 4,000 miles, hopefully the engine will last the life of the car. You stretch it out to 20 or 30,000 between oil changes, you're probably going to have to swing by and have her drop a new engine in it. <laughs> so, yeah, take good care of your home. It's probably your largest investment. All right. Oh, Kathy, one more. You said there was the special was ending November 30th. Right. What's that, the hotel? The hotel special. Would you like for me to start your job next yes, week? Yes, do it. Okay, you got it. All right, thank you, everybody. Oh, yes. mattresses and bugs. Well, seriously, like, if you get your house, like, regularly, like, blanketed or whatever, does that help with, like, the bed, bed bugs or whatever? And, because, you know, like, this, you know, like, bed bugs, like, mattresses? Right. Like, is that just a place for them to go? I mean, is it, is it common? Is it... Uh, I mean, all right. The, yes, fumigations can help with bed bugs, but may I suggest, ladies and gentlemen, if you're really concerned about it, maybe you're doing a lot of traveling, you're worried about importing bed bugs from, you know, another hotel or, or somewhere. I would suggest using bed bug mattress encasements. Okay. Yeah, you can buy those online. Some stores carry them, but if you do buy one, make sure it's a good one. They're about $75 a piece. You'll need one for the mattress and one for the box spring. Fantastic investment, and they are bed bug resistant. Okay. Great job. Thank you.